Hello, I am Mrs. Abishusha from Warmwood Elementary. This video that you're about to watch will outline the expectations for teaching kindergarten students measurement according to standards KMD1, KMD2, and KMD3. The big idea for these standards is to apply measurement concepts to describe shapes and space. Students will describe measurable attributes of objects, which means heavy, light, long, short, wide, and narrow. They are not listing attributes such as red, yellow, bumpy, or smooth. Students will compare objects with like measurable attributes and classify objects into categories based on these measurable attributes. Students must have a clear understanding of MD1 and MD2 because these standards lay the groundwork for first grade standards asking students to order objects by length and compare lengths as well as express length in units which is exactly what they will be doing by the end of first grade. Students must also have a clear grasp on MD3 because this standard sets the stage for collecting and graphing data in later grades. The first standard we will examine is KMD1. This standard has students describe measurable attributes of objects such as length or weight and describe several measurable attributes of a single object. For this standard, knowledge of key vocabulary is a key indicator of success. Be sure to model appropriate vocabulary and provide students with opportunities to use this vocabulary in context. In order to be successful at this standard, students must also have a variety of opportunities to use their senses to describe actual objects, not pictures on a worksheet. Students can use their sense of sight and touch to determine if a block is heavy, tall, long, and so on. Encourage students to make self-connections to measurable objects by discussing objects relevant to them. When teaching MD1, be careful that students don't confuse attributes. They may say that an item is bigger than another when they really mean longer. Because they don't yet possess the vocabulary and understanding of the differences between the attributes, they use what is familiar to them to describe the objects. This is why it's really important for the teacher to model using appropriate vocabulary. It is also important to have conversations about the differences between the attributes, what each word means, and what it looks like. Explicitly model each attribute of an object for students to see. I personally enjoy modeling things for my students, and for kindergarten especially, you can make it fun and do it in a silly way, which is going to be memorable for them and a lot of times make them more interested in the topic. One way I model is by using hand gestures. So if I'm saying something is big, I use a proper gesture for that, which is two hands parallel to one another with a large space in between. And the same goes for if I'm saying something is small, long, or tall. I would use the appropriate gestures for those. With the following standard, which is KMD2, students compare two objects with common attributes. The vocabulary used in the previous standard now needs to be adjusted to fit the new standard. Therefore, if students aren't already familiar with the vocabulary, it will put them at a disadvantage for mastering the standard because students have to compare using the same attribute. So now we need to say this object is lighter than the other or this object is heavier than the other. They're really just seeing which object has more or less of the attribute and describing it accordingly. A good example for you to use in class would be to take two students, one tall and one short and compare the students' heights. So you could say, for example, Eris is taller than Noah, or Noah is shorter than Eris. This way, students can make that personal connection and see a firsthand example, which sometimes makes it more relevant to them and it makes them more interested in the topic. Standard MD3 asks students to classify objects into categories by their attributes. Then students count the number of objects in each category and sort the categories based on the count. For this standard, the attributes do not need to be measurable. They just need to be descriptive, such as color, size, or texture. Students have to notice similarities and differences between objects, sort objects or shapes by attributes, determine the amount of objects in a group, and identify whether the number of objects in a group is greater, less than, or equal to the number in another group. Keep in mind, that when having students identify the number of objects and shapes, there should only be 10 objects and shapes or less in that comparison. That is the highest number that is appropriate for kindergarten. This standard asks 
students to compare both 2D and 3D objects with measurable attributes. Begin with comparing three-dimensional objects that students can easily manipulate before comparing two-dimensional pictures of objects. When comparing both two-dimensional and three-dimensional objects, be sure that students line them up properly. We want to make sure they do this properly from the beginning so that they are not practicing incorrectly. This will also set the stage for future grades where students need to correctly line a ruler up to an object in order to properly measure it. Students also have to become familiar with vocabulary, which will allow them to accurately classify and sort objects. Some examples are color words, red, yellow, blue, green, black, and so on. Descriptive words such as small, big, rough, smooth, bumpy, round, or flat and quantitative words. More, less, same amount as, compare, sort, and category. K5TeachingResources.com has several great activities for standard MD3, as well as all of the standards we discussed today. When searching for measurement activities on their website, be sure to begin by clicking on the measurement link at the top of the page. Many books have also been written to support students' learning of attributes, classifying, and sorting. Here are just a few titles that you see on this slide above. I hope this video was helpful. In the slide above, you will find resources that you can use to help make your planning easier and the execution of your lesson flow more smoothly. Happy planning!